What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're jumping into something awesome. 40 to 1, the battle of wisdom of Sabaton history. We'll follow it up with Sabaton's 40 to 1 live. Let's go. Shout out to Martine for the request. I definitely appreciate it. I just feel like the two match together so too perfectly to not do them together. Let's jump into it. Let's check it out together. Let's see what we got. I'm Indy Nidell. I'm Par from Sabaton, and this is Sabaton history. Contrary to popular opinion, Polish resistance when the Germans invaded in September 1939 was a lot stronger and more determined than you might think. Our song 40 to 1, that song that made Sabaton popular in Poland, is just about that. The song 40 to 1 is about the Battle of Wisna. Let's look at the history. How a small detachment of around 720 Polish infantrymen held off more than 40,000 German soldiers for over three days. A story that has even entered Polish lore as the Polish Thermopylae, Polski Thermopylae. Okay, September 1939, the German invasion of Poland has begun. So silent Poland will soon also be invaded by the Soviet Union, and within six weeks will be divided by those two great powers. But we're still in the first week of the German invasion. On the 7th, the 19th Army Corps of Heeresgruppe Nord, part of the German 3rd Army under General Heinz Guderian, was quickly advancing to try and cross the river Biebrze, a tributary of the river Nareb, east of the town of Wisna. By doing so, it would be able to encircle the Polish Narev Corps and then close in on Warsaw from the northeast. Now, the Polish army had begun building defense works around the strategic crossing where the Biebrze and Narev meet since early 1939, when the possibility of war began really looming. The crossing is surrounded by swamps and bogs, so a system of echelon bunkers and pillboxes on the hills overlooking the rivers would be a serious threat to any army trying to make a crossing. Thing is, as the German Panzer Corps approached, the defense works were not completed. Only 12 major bunkers were battle oh, ready, shit. and there were a few machine gun pillboxes spread out over two actual lines of defense. The big flaw, though, was that the system did not have any larger anti-tank guns or mortars. And with a force of 350 tanks approaching, this flaw... I don't ever want to be on any side where there's 350 tanks approaching my position. That is not the place was I now a be. major problem. Holy the Polish hell. defenders, commanded by Captain Vladislav Raginis, had quickly thrown up some anti-tank obstacles, prepared the forward approach with trenches and barbed wire, and mined the riverbanks. Raginis himself had chosen the bunker in the middle as his command post, but, you know, he must have known that with only six 7.6 guns, a few dozen machine guns, and only a pair of anti-tank rifles, he could not hope to hold out forever. But as German planes dropped propaganda leaflets from the skies, urging the Poles to surrender, Raginus vowed that he would, in fact, die trying. The 8th of September it starts, the rage of the Reich, a barrage of mortars and guns. It was a very horrible time, but there were some phenomenal, like, human accomplishments. Like, we really showed what humans are capable of. Some of the shit that they had to endure was insane. Things you only hear about in movies today. It's terrifying. I'll face my fate here. The sound of artillery strike. So fierce, the thunder of guns. The first skirmish 
between German and Polish recon units was fought for the village of Wisna on the 7th, but the Poles gave up what was an undefendable village without serious resistance. So already at the beginning of the action, it looks like the Poles have been routed, but they haven't given up and they have not fled. They have retreated back over the river into the safety of their bunkers. The Germans pursued them, but Polish engineers blew the bridges to stop them. The battle had begun. German heavy artillery was brought up and pounded the Polish positions throughout the remainder of the day. The Polish artillery was no match for this and was forced to withdraw, but the Polish bunkers held. Stuka bombardments from the air also failed to break them since the walls of those bunkers were over one and a half meters thick and reinforced with steel plates. German assault troops came next, attacking over the next two days, but as soon as they crossed the river, they were hit by machine gun fire from the forward Polish pillboxes. Suffering heavy casualties, they were forced to retreat time and again. However, the evening of the 8th, as German tanks began to cross, and with no adequate measures to deal with them and overall limited ammunition, the Polish infantry withdrew from their forward lines near the river to the safety of the bunkers. The German tanks rolled over and through those lines, but their guns could not penetrate the bunkers, nor could they provide enough cover for the infantry to follow. It was a somewhat bizarre stalemate. Yet, it's a without very weird thing. All of the ground forces stopped, but the tanks not stop. Help from any reinforcements or any real anti-tank capability, the it's Polish crazy. soldiers were now trapped. Another flaw in the bunker system now became apparent. The major bunkers were sometimes too far away from each other to provide adequate support and could not cover each other's blind spots. So it turned out that the Germans were able to attack and isolate them one after the other. The first bunkers to fall were the ones just across the Narev River. Concentrated heavy artillery bombardment and advancing tanks forced the defenders to flee or else be completely encircled. The other bunkers held out until the 10th. But in the early morning that day, after three days of holding off 40 to 1 odds, the Poles faced defeat, as small platoons of German combat engineers could finally take out the damaged bunkers with explosives, with tanks providing covering fire. One after the other was destroyed, and the Germans closed in on Captain Raginus' command center. By this time, most of his company was reportedly either dead or wounded, and the ammunition was nearly finished. Captain Reginus finally ordered his men to surrender their weapons since the battle that they could not win was effectively over. True to his word though, Captain Reginus died by clutching a grenade to his body in his command bunker. They had held out for over three days against some of the strongest forces in the entire German army. That is the story of the Polish Thermopylae. According to some, Guderian threatened to shoot Polish prisoners if they did not give up. Though that seems unlikely since the battle was already won and it's out of character for Guderian, but okay, it's possible. We don't know for sure, and this is important here. First-hand sources on the battle are fairly few. The German battle records don't really mention the engagement, and Polish sources differ on the strength of the defenders. So we don't have any concrete number of casualties or what happened to the Polish prisoners taken in the battle. Now, this battle, its story, has entered the realm almost of myth, and you may be skeptical of not just the details, but the overall concept, but let me be the first to put that to rest for you. This battle is what Sabaton chose to write a song about, but there are several other shining examples of determined and excellent Polish defense against overwhelming odds during the German invasion. The Battle of the Bzura, the defense at Hel Peninsula, even the remarkable evacuation of Lot, the Polish national airline, of its planes, machine tools, and factory equipment to Bucharest in the face of dual invasion, all attest to the grit and will of the Polish defenders, with which you might not be familiar because already during the war, the Allies crafted a narrative of a heavily inferior Poland, easily overrun by the mighty Germans, in order to reinforce how aggressive and dangerous Nazi Germany was. So, the idea of Polish horsemen fighting hopelessly against tanks, dive bombers, and heavy artillery 
was reinforced in films and articles and has stuck as the popular version of the beginning of World War II. But it wasn't so. Always remember a fallen soldier. Always remember bombs and soldiers at war. Always remember a fallen soldier. Always remember beauty in history. Power is now going to tell you some things you may not know about the song itself. I was here to. It's crazy to hear it like this. Like, sure, I knew Germany invaded Poland, and like, but that's what you kind of hear about it. And you never, oh, at least over here, we don't really get taught that there was a huge like no, that any of this kind of beyond human feat that seems crazy to me. Versus that many people, most people would just say, you know what, we can't determined individuals just hardcore you could only expect to stand out for a certain time and they did to tell you the story of the battle and even use it as a metaphor for a spirited defense against an overwhelming enemy well two enemies as it turned out and just a note here after the invasion of poland and even with the speed of its success adolf hitler's generals warned him time and again to wait before attacking in western europe which he originally planned to do already in October 1939 because the strong Polish defense had shown them their own weaknesses and they did not think that they were yet strong enough to win. No! No! Now, you said that this was the song that really made you famous in Poland. How did that happen? Was it planned or just one of those things? Oh no, uh, it was not planned at all. So we were sitting in the backstage area at the Sweden Rock Festival in our tour bus, right. watching internet, watching there was something going on, so much attention towards a fan-created video on YouTube, which suddenly gained a lot, a lot of views and comments. A fan-created Sabaton video? Yes. So you had nothing to do with this? We didn't have anything to do with this video, and it became vitally popular in a short period of time. By then, this is in 2008, you have different charts on YouTube. You right. have historical, political, musical charts on YouTube. Yeah. And we were top charting of all of them. In so the world? Yes. Oh, okay. And it was it was 40 to 1, it was a Polish guy that made this video? Yes. So what happened? Did it, I mean, did you were number one for weeks? or? No, no. It was just for a few days before this was taken off. There was a copyright infringement and the video was taken down and blocked after a few days. Right. However, yeah. it reached around to a lot of fans all across the country of Poland. Yeah. Including, it reached to a descendant of the captain that we sing about in the song. Right. And oh, this guy wow. was a filmmaker contacting us, wanted to do an official music video for the song 40 to 1. Right. So we went down to Poland to where the battle actually took place, right. to Wisna, where we filmed some footage when we were walking around in the battlefield, in the scenery, and uh, we also played a concert yeah. in Gdansk where we used live footage to cut this together to an official music video. Wow, okay. And now, now by this time, because of the video and stuff, was there like a, a big Sabaton hype in Poland? I mean, what happened there? Well, suddenly Sabaton got a very big hype inside of Poland. But was it just among like the Polish kids or was it like across Polish society? And I, I think it was all across the society okay. and it was mainly a lot of the older generation who yeah. find this very interesting because this was a story who could s unite the Polish people. Students wanted to read about this okay. and not about the propaganda that was written in the, in the history books sure. that they grew up reading about. Then did you continue doing like bigger, bigger tours of Poland? or? or? We kept doing... I keep telling y'all that Sabaton history needs to be in schools. More and more tours in Poland. Mm -hmm. And in 2009, yeah. we came back for what we called Always Remember Tour. And uh, it was for a couple of shows all across Poland. One of those shows yeah. was actually at the battlefield. At, okay, at Wisna. In Wisna. Wow. Actually, 70 years to the hour after the battle. Right. And... Uh, the opening act was a full reenactment of the battle, including uh, mortar attacks and tanks and soldiers and planes? and planes. And it was a very, very intense opening ceremony. So the whole it. battle, they did the... Wow. Yes. Until today, that is still the coolest band that ever opened for us. I, I, the coolest band that ever opened for anybody, <laughs> Par. That's freaking awesome. We also did a show in Gdansk yeah. where we were 
approached by somebody we did not expect it to come to a Sabaton concert. So we were sitting backstage just before the show is gonna be. Yeah. The promoter of the concert comes uh, into our dressing room and he explains, you have um, a little bit different kind of person here tonight. And we're like, okay, so who is that? Well, it's actually the Archbishop. What? Yeah. The, the, I, didn't, I didn't see that coming. The, arch, the Archbishop. <laughs> the arch. Yeah, yes, we didn't yeah. see that coming either. He came onto the stage and a lot of people were complaining about it and booing. But he said only a few simple words. And he said that the church bows to a male band. And then he gave us this sword from the treasury of the Church of Poland. That is... <laughs> that is awesome. Holy crap. So, so cool. And just think how that is when... A song, a person, or a people, or a nation can take a song to heart and make it so important to their lives like that. That's got to feel really good. It feels great, and uh, the song has kind of permanently edged itself to Sabaton. Oh, yeah. And I do not believe that we could get away alive yeah. by going to Poland, play a show, and not performing 40 to 1. It's a permanent <laughs> song in the Sabaton catalog. And you know what? Here's how it looks. You know what? We're gonna get into how it looks. Don't show me a whole. Oh, hold on, does it go? Don't show me the whole thing. You're going to watch it after this. Always remember, a fallen soldier. Always remember. No more, no more, no more, no more spoilers. We're gonna jump into it right now, so I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Let's make sure we. Okay, that's gonna be a little. You might be talking. No! All right, everyone. Here's the deal. Subscribe to Sabaton History, but also the regular Sabaton channel, and don't forget to check out World War II and the Time Ghost channel. Also, if you like more of this stuff, check right here for a playlist of cool videos like this. And if you like this and you want to see more like this, please remember to support us on Patreon, all right? It really helps this thing happen. Take care, everyone. Hey, 100%, get over and check out Sabaton if you haven't done so already, though I'm certain you have by now. Come on. I'll go see if their Patreon community is for you. Go check it all out. Go show Sabaton history the love as well. We'll be right back. We're going to jump into 40 to 1 in two seconds. And we're back. This is the video that was requested. Shout out to Martine for the request. Let's go. Sabaton 40 to 1 alive. By I'm sure it's going to be intense. Vladislav Raginis. They were less than a thousand Polish soldiers. There were over 40,000 German soldiers. They held them for three days! And they were outnumbered! 40 to 1! That's probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Rolling a big old flag out across the top of the audience like that. Good on the audience for participating to get it to the back. That's freaking fantastic. <laughs>
The rolling out of the flag was super heartwarming. Like, I just, I don't know. I got nothing but respect to all of the fallen that have gone before, that have done the things that they did, the, in, the crazy, crazy, superhuman things that people had to do sometimes. 40 to 1 odds. Nobody wants those odds. Nobody ever. And most people would turn and flee the other way. It's amazing to see that there was actually like a force to say you know what Ooh, whether we live or die we gotta try and i think that is damn the most noble thing ever uh very very cool history to learn considering all we ever learned was that german invaded poland and they make it seem like it was a thing like it was just the drop of a hat they marched in there they walked in and took it away get over and show sabotage all the love in the world go show sabaton all the love in the world go show that sabaton history the love I definitely appreciate these requests. That just one of the top bands that I'm super glad we got introduced to because we learn so much every single time you listen. Smash the like button if you liked it, the dislike button, but I won't believe you. Tell the next one. Remind the good boy. You guys be happy, healthy, safe. We love you to the moon and back, Pete.